Hi, this is Fred Green of Golf Smarter with our spring back into golf season with the late Tony Manzoni. In previous years of replaying these episodes as part of our archived content, we kept it to a hand-picked selection of nine. But this time, and for the future, because of your response, we're going to feature every episode in order that Tony discussed his single pivot swing method, his incredible College of the Desert golf team's success, his book and video, and stories about his relationship with the rich and famous from Palm Springs, including the godfather of his daughter, Frank Sinatra. Last episode from July 2011 was just after he released his book, The Lost Fundamental, One Simple Move, Better Golf Forever. But you probably have never heard this episode because it was for members only in April 2012 and has never been replayed. We recorded this just after his video of the same name was published on DVD. After he passed away in 2018, both the book and the DVD were out of print. So we were instrumental in getting his widow to agree to republish the book on Amazon, including the Kindle format, and allowing us to distribute the video online. All this was with the promise to create a tax-deductible fund created in his memory to benefit the first tee of Coachella Valley. For more on Tony and everything we were able to find on him, please go to golfsmarter.com slash Tony, all lowered cased. If you'd like access to the video, please write to me directly, golfsmarterpodcast at gmail.com, or click on the Hey Fred button when you visit golfsmarter.com. For members only, Golf Smarter number 328, published on April 10, 2012. Stop topping the ball forever with Tony Manzoni. This is Golf Smarter. Sharing tips and insights from golfers and golf professionals to help lower your score. It's worked for your host, Fred Green. Welcome back to Golf Smarter for members only, Tony. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and I'm so glad to have you back on the show. You are such a fan favorite, a listener favorite on Golf Smarter. I, I'm, I'm just so pleased that you've gotten such nice reaction from the Golf Smarter audience. Well, I do appreciate that, uh, Fred. And, uh, you know, this is a labor of love for me. Oh, yeah. and, and I'm sure it is for you, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we have a passion about golf and golf instruction. And, you know, I'm just trying to get something out there that helps people. It's, it's not ego-based. It's, I've, I've done a lot of reading, and I believe every day that I to listen to people teach, I learn something. And I'm just trying to get this down to where it's great for the consumer, that they can understand it and do it. Well, that's what's so special about your teachings is that you are able to communicate it in a, in a fashion that um, the average the average golfer, the uh, just the, the, the layperson understands what you're saying. It's not so technical, but it is concise. And I think that that uh, also is true to a testimony to how well your teams do at College of the Desert. Yeah, uh, we we do have a great record, and we're off to a good start again. We're four and zero in league play, and we played three invitationals, one, two, and and that was you know, second place in, the, in in one. So we're off and running. We're you know, we're going after our twenty fourth consecutive year to win the conference, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. But yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. And and you know we 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 have a new team every two years, so it's not like we have this dynasty that we're building here. But um, well, I mean the weather. The weather doesn't certainly doesn't hurt, so we we draw some nice young men, and and so far we've been lucky to keep drawing them, and we're saying the right things, and and they're producing. Well, that's what's so interesting is you say that these these kids only play for two years. What age are your team members? What do they range? Well, I get them right, uh, like right out of high school, you know, eighteen, nineteen years old. So they're they're all young men, and they all have a dream of, of you know playing this game professionally. Uh, so we try to put them on that track. Obviously, they all can't make it. Uh, we show them the work ethic that's needed. Okay, and so I, I know that I know that you don't have much of an issue talking about your age. How old are you again? I'm 75. You're 75, and you're dealing with 18 and 19 year olds, which could easily be grandchildren or even great grandchildren at some point. At some well, places. They're, yeah, they're they're really my <laughs> they become my children. There's no question about that. Yeah, and. Uh, and I love it. I, I really do. And I, you know, I learn from them in, in some in some ways. Uh, it keeps me from 
getting caught in the gap, you know, and yeah. staying stagnant. So it's 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 a win win for both of us. Well, the, the and and it goes back to what we were just speaking on that your ability to communicate with eighteen and nineteen year olds and and clearly to have going on your twenty fourth consecutive uh, regional championship. You must be doing something to gain their respect, to not have attitude from these kids, because that's an age where they can really have a lot of attitude when they come in and tell you that, what do you know, old man? You know, it, it's, I'm just so impressed. Well, uh, you know, it, it's not easy at times. I, I'm not going to say that it's always simple. We, we get a few kids, but, you know, as I tell all the boys on my team, I, I, I don't care if you're a plus five if you're a jerk uh, and you want to stay a jerk, then you're not going to be part of my team because winning championships is, is important, but building character is much more important. And that's what I'm really here for. A lot of these young people haven't had a lot of parenting for, for whatever reason. And that's part of my responsibility as, as a golf coach is to help them on that part of it because the, the majority of them are going to go on to work in the golf business or do something and I, and I, it's my responsibility to show them what they need to do to be successful. And, you know, that's just how it goes. And, and I love the kids. I, and, and, you know, I learn a little bit. I, I mean, I'm not really crazy about their music, but they're not crazy <laughs> about Frank Sinatra either. So, <laughs> so you know. Well, they have a lot to learn. You know, <laughs> that's right. You know, I'll tell you something. I could almost guarantee you that it's going to be uh, faster for them to appreciate Sinatra than it will be for you to appreciate their music. Because I know when my <laughs> when my younger kid came out of college and started telling me about Frank Sinatra, he discovered Frank Sinatra and how cool he was. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're kidding, really? That doesn't mean I have to listen. I don't have to listen to LL Cool J, do I? <laughs> That's funny. Tupac, yeah, maybe. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the roots, the, every, you know, when we were kids, we, we had our own little fashions and some other things. And I try not to be too, you know, judgmental about some of the things they do. But some of the things that I, I can see that it's it's a deterrent from them. The people are going to misjudge them by wearing their pants down and all that sagging stuff. Oh, and, God. And, um, and, and I, I don't want to jump on them being critical, pull your pants or that kind of thing, because that just makes them resist more. So I try to explain to them, you know, what they're projecting and how that hurts them financially. Yeah. Uh, and also people draw conclusions about them that aren't true. And little by little by little by chipping away and just trying to make sense without saying don't, um, it, it, it starts changing. And that's and always for the better. That's a nice approach. That's now, a- I tell them you've got two choices in life. You can be common or you can be special. And uh, I really, really hope you choose special. And when you talk like that, it, their eyes open up a little bit, you know, mm. so do their minds. Well, that was a great piece of, uh, that's a great golf tip right there. That, <laughs> for any yeah. parent and any teacher, that's a, that's a great piece of advice. Thank you very much. Well, as we dole out these congratulations, let me also throw out that the uh, DVD, the Lost Fundamental DVD, has been created, published, and released, and it will be available on the Golf Smarter uh, website. Thank you very much, as well as the LostFundamental.com. Talk to me about your new DVD, The Lost Fundamental, that supports the book, The Lost Fundamental, One Simple Move, Better Golf Forever. Well, I, I was lucky enough to meet a young man by the name of Adrian Herta, and he he really helped me put this together. Uh, when we're trying to do a DVD, um, it's really easy to talk too much uh, and and trying to get your point across. So we edited it down to where it's almost almost too simple, uh, but that's the way I wanted it, uh, and, and and I think it's going to be very effective. If people watch it, you have to watch it a couple of times. It's, uh, the, the only downside to it, you realize how old I really am. <laughs> I've got a young voice. <laughs> but anyway, uh, all kidding aside, uh, I'm very happy with the DVD. It, it's just a reflection of the book. And for those of us that learn better by watching, I think uh, it, it serves the purpose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tell me about uh, where you start on the DVD. Well, how is the DVD different than the book? Well, it's just visual. I, I, the, the concept is there. It's the same 
it's the same concept. Uh, but you see, I, I, I use three different age groups uh, and teach them basically the same thing. You can see their flexibility issues are different. Um, but again, I, what I primarily say is, look, this works for everybody, and this is an easy way to play the game, and you're not going to injure your back. Uh, that's, that's the message. And I promise you that uh, if you look at so many of the young players on tour, they're, they're staying centered over that golf ball. They're not moving their head to the right anymore. Uh, and, and, and it's not something new. It's something that they're going, they're going back to. It's what, it's what Hogan did. It's what Nicholas did. It's what Palmer did. It's what Trevino did. None of those guys swayed off the ball. And, and their careers lasted a long time. Um, as we hit a certain age, it's really hard to move off the ball and back onto it while you're trying to hit that thing in the back of the back of it. You know, it's really hard to do that. Uh, it's, it's, it's doable, but it, the older you get, it becomes impossible. So that's what, that's what the, my DVD is about. You, you can actually see the person doing this, and that's, that's the proof of the pudding. Uh, yeah, um, I noticed that as well, and I think that the the thing that came across in our multiple conversations before, um, even that you have the pictures in the book, but you talk about the sway and how that's just uh, deadly to your swing, right? It's it just, it, you know, there's been some great players. Curtis Strange was a big swayer off the ball. There's some, some great players that were. But I don't think you can continue that, especially as you get into your senior years and so forth. I think, mm-hmm. I think it becomes almost impossible. Uh, most of the people you see on the driving range, you see them get off their right foot, and they and their body swings back. Uh, they're going in the opposite direction, and then they say, "Well, I guess I'm getting older and I can't hit anywhere." Well, you can't hit anywhere with your arms, but if you learn how to use your core properly and get your body in the right position relative to the ball at impact, you can hit it a lot farther than you think you can. And that's what I'm finding. I, that's the thing that I hear more than anything else is I'm hitting it farther. Uh, and that's from people that are 50s, 60s, 70s. They even got a guy 86 years old taking lessons from me. And, and, and he claims he's hitting it farther than he did when he was 20, 20 years old. I'm not 20 years old, but 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So because he's hitting more square. And that, that's the whole thing. You don't miss hit it when you're on the ball. When you're moving back and forth, it's just so hard to catch a flush. I recently took a trip with my buddies. Um, I talk about this every year. We go on this golf trip. And I noticed one of the things in looking at photographs of us at the end of the weekend, I have one friend who just, he has no distance. He has a really tough time hitting the ball farther than 150, 160 yards. Um, And I noticed that not only is he, most of his weight is on his back foot. Um, throughout the swing and definitely at the end of his swing. But he also does not, and help me on this one, he doesn't pivot his back foot at all. He, he's right-handed, so it's his right foot. But when he's done with the swing, it, not only is he leaning far back, but his uh, his right foot, his back foot, is still pointed to where the ball was teed up. Sure, sure, and, and, and as it must be, because if you put any, any weight at all on the right side and then try to turn your body left where, where it has to go. Your ears, you get stuck. And you, and I'll tell you, you put a lot of pressure on your lower back. So for, for the listeners out there that are doing that, just, just put all your weight on your left foot, lift your heel of your right foot off, off the ground so that you just on the toe, barely, and barely weight there. And then just turn your chest and shoulders. You'll see that you can turn left quite a ways. Then if you put some weight on that right foot, try the same thing and you'll see that you'll stop midway. And that's where most people are. So they don't get the full force of the body um, driving through that golf ball. If you watch a good boxer, you know, it, it isn't an arm motion, it's a body motion. And, and, and everything, throwing a ball, whatever, the body has to be, uh, um, has to be in position for the throw. Uh, it has to be in position for the punch. So if it's out of position, you're gonna, it's going to be a weak motion. And that's what this is all about. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. Ben Hogan discovered this, as have a lot of players. But the closer you're, the center of gravity of the body is about four or five inches below the navel. The closer that center of gravity is during the backswing to the pivot leg, the faster you're going to pivot and the freer you're going to pivot. And that's, just a, that's just a scientific fact. That's not, that's not Tony Manzoni's theory or anybody else's theory. That's just how it is. 
and Hogan was smart enough to discover this. In, in a book called Maximum Golf, uh, with his, one of his students, John Schley, he said, I find that the more I'm on the left side at the top of the swing, I can pivot my shoulders faster around my left, my, my left axis, consequently hitting the ball farther. So Hogan made this statement a long time ago. It's just that there's all, so many people caught this thing, well, isn't that reverse weight shift? No, it has nothing to do with reverse weight shift. Reverse weight shift is on the, on the downswing where your body is going backwards towards the right foot. You can put all the weight you want on the left side at the top as long as you move forward with the second move. So, you know, uh, I mean, you know, when you try to hit a ball low, you're, 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 you're moving forward, and the club closes a little bit. Well, in a sense, we're just centering ourselves on the golf ball instead of putting our head behind the golf ball. And we make contact as we're turning through the ball. We're not, we're not making contact as we face the ball. We're making contact as our body has rotated towards the target. If you think about Annika Sorensen, she had one of, the, one of the best moves I've ever seen except for Hogan because she looked like she was looking at the target when she hit the ball. But that was just because she was moving through prior to impact, and that's where all that power came from. Mm-hmm. At, the, at the very beginning of this answer, you mentioned lifting the heel of your right foot. Now, is that just as a test or in your as setup? A as a test. As a test. But okay. one, one of the things that I do to ensure is I, I put my right foot, I, I kick my knee in, and I, put, I really feel my weight on the inside edge of my right foot. And as I coil, I try not to gather any more weight in that position. And then when my hip turns behind me, my shoulder turns behind me, I'm actually displacing weight more towards the left side. If I was in a cylinder and I turned my right shoulder, my weight would be going towards my left side. There's no question about that. I mean, no one could argue with that. Uh, and so, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bracing between the, the instep of the right foot and, and, the, and the instep of the left foot. So I'm braced there. But primarily, the majority of my weight is left, okay, because that's where I have to have it at impact. So I'm just kind of cheating a little bit. I'm getting it over there sooner. See, now all I have to do is rotate hard, rotate around that axis. And the club head comes last, my body is first. And I get I get terrific compression on the ball. You know, for an, for an old guy, I can still hit the ball out there pretty good, uh, shockingly. Uh, and I'm certainly not a physical specimen, but I'm in the position to hit it as best it, 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 with as much power that I have. And I think everybody out there probably hasn't reached that position unless they've read my book and been practicing. Uh, if they're in the middle of their stance or on that right side when they're hitting the golf ball, they, there's no way they're, they're compressing the golf ball like they can. Uh, and then, of course, there's the um, the sweeping of the ball versus the compression of the ball, you know, or trying to lift the ball. That's the other thing I found that the same player did. Not only is he not turning, but he's, with all that weight going backwards, it, it looks as if he's trying to lift the ball. He's not letting the club do its job. Well, with your weight going backwards, your arms can only go so far, and then they start going up. Mm-hmm. So, as I tell people, when you hit a ball fat or you hit a ball thin, it's because you're behind the ball. That, that's, that's the reason. I mean, you know, it, it shows itself in different forms, but it's behind, you're behind the ball. When you're moving through the ball, the, the club is still, it's actually, it's shallowing out. But when you stay way behind it, this, the club is going up. It has to go up because your center of your swing is, is a foot or two behind that golf ball. So, so the, the forward arc starts way too early. And that's why a lot of people can't get an iron in the, in the air because they're too far behind the ball. Oh, well, actually, now that we're going to continue, I, I'm, I know this friend is not listening to this, so I'm going to keep, and I'm not going to use his name, so I'm going to keep talking about this because I noticed so many things after talking with you so many times. I'm now looking at, at, at other people so differently than I had in the past because basically I wasn't looking at them. I was looking at their ball. But um, he tops the ball a lot. I mean, there's, there, it's frequent that the ball is rolling off off the tee. I mean, he rarely, we get all excited when he hits the ball in the air. Whoa, great hit. Whether it goes right or well, left, it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, you got it. You make great contact. You hit the ball in the air. Well, there's two things that cause topping. I've always believed it. I, I, when people say you looked up, that's just insanity because nobody's looking up. 
But what you, what you, if you tighten up prior to impact, where everything stops, when you tighten your hands and in, in an anticipation of impact, your arms pull back, they, your muscles contract. So, so the club comes up a little bit. That's one way to top it. That's how most people, I always tell people mm. you top it because you tighten up, not look up. But so, so wait, 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 wait. And how, how can we notice? Because I notice that he, when he's about to hit the ball, even when he pulls the, his club back, his whole face just turns into as if he's, oh, he's trying to, uh, how do I be it, kind it, about it's this? He's got a, it, look, it's because he's, he's, he has a hit thought. He's absolutely doing it perfect. He's telling his body that he's going to hit something. The body flexes up, getting ready for that blow. Uh, that's why all, everyone talks about swinging through the ball, swinging past the ball, using the ball as a point of reference to align, align the body, but not, not as a target. Once, when you, when you do that, your instincts are going to jump right in, and you're going to tighten up your hands, and you're going to do it. Now, some great players can purposely try to hit a little harder, but I promise you, we've all done this. We, we take one more club on a hole because we think, well, I'll hit an easy five instead of a six, and you blow it right over the green. Well, that's because you swung. You weren't trying to hit anything. You're swinging smooth. Mm-hmm. So you're, you, get, you get maximum flexibility. You get maximum uh, thrust. You get everything. Nothing's slowing down at impact. And when we top the ball, it's a decelerating move. Uh, that's why I say when you when you stay behind the golf ball, you're gonna, you're gonna you're never gonna get fairway wounds up. I can tell you that. You forget about the hitting the three wood in the air; it's just not gonna happen. Uh, you've got to be moving through that golf ball so that club can shallow out and catch that ball a little bit on the down. If you're hanging back, it's, it's that club's coming up too soon, and you're gonna hit the, you're gonna hit the middle or top of the ball. So for somebody who's been playing the game for 20, 30 years and has all these issues, it's not going to be very easy for them to make some, some changes into their swing, into their, into their basic mechanics. Um, and well, even I don't if think, you did you know, after you know, a lesson, it's, it's still he's going to forget it next in two weeks if he doesn't well, play. I, I don't really teach swing so much as I teach uh, the, the, the relationship of the body to the golf ball. Uh, if I oh, can get I your going. body... At address in the right position, and if I can get you to move your if you're right-handed, get your right side past that ball prior to impact or at at, at impact. Um, I, I don't care what your hands do. If, if they're somewhat connected to the body, they're going to they're going to react on their own. You can't purposely um, square the club with your hands. That's just crazy. I hear these guys say your wrist has to be flat at impact. That's that's because of momentum. You can't put them there. The club's moving 70, 80 miles an hour, depending on how strong you are. There's no way to do that. But if your body's in the right position, that will happen. In other words, if you're rotating through that golf ball, you're, and, you're, and that club has last, and your hands are going to be, your hands are going to be uh, flat at impact. You're not going to be cupped. But once you stop that body, then the momentum of the arms going forward is going to, are going to cup the wrist. That's why that happens. It's just that people don't go through the ball. When you're hitting a golf ball, you have to, your mind has to be at position A, position B, and the ball's in the way of you going to those positions. If, if, you, if you target the golf ball, you, you're never going to get to position B, and consequently you're going to cup your wrist, you're going to swing up prematurely, you're going to hang back. All those things are going to happen just because you didn't get through the ball. I mean, I have, I have women that I teach, and I say, look, when you get to the top of the swing, all I want you to do is one thing, get past the ball with a turning motion. And they're always so shocked when they see they hit it so much farther and hit the ball up in the air. But that's, I mean, that's the, that's the core thing here. That has to happen no matter what you do with your hands. At the top of your swing, they can be cupped, flat. I don't, I don't care about that. It doesn't mean anything. They're holding that cup wrist at the top. Tiger Woods has flat wrist at the top. Who cares? What matters is at the bottom. And the only way you're going to go through impact properly is that the big muscles have to be pulled in the little muscles. Once the big muscles stop and the little muscles move forward, all hell breaks loose. Unless you're lucky and you time it, you know. And you hear more and more players talking about, I want to eliminate the timing action of the golf swing because there's just too much pressure out there. You can't get out there and be timing the rolling of your hands and things like that. And that's been taught for years. I mean, that's how I was taught to play. You can't do that now. Not if you're going to play at that level. Our third and last round of the weekend, in the back nine, he was my friend was so frustrated. He said, "What am I? 
what am I doing? What can I do? I keep, you know, rolling the ball. And I'm like, are you asking me for advice? Because I've kept my mouth shut all weekend. <laughs> I'll be... And all I said was, try moving the ball back about an inch mm-hmm. in, in your stance. Just move the ball back a little bit and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Because if you're continuing to hit the ball, that must mean that you're, 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 you're on your upswing a little too early because I didn't want to say, yeah, because you're leaning on your back foot because you're getting no rotation. Cause in the middle of a round, that's not going to help. Right? There's no, yeah. There's no way to do so that. So I just yeah. said, just move the ball back an inch and see what happens. And his next three shots were the best shots of the weekend. And he kind of looked at me like, what? Where, what? <laughs> So um, in essence, you, you, in essence, you move you move his head more forward by moving the ball back. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah. By moving the ball back in the stance, the head position now is more forward of the ball than it was when the ball was forward. So in a, in essence, you you did kind of that. Hmm. Interesting, and I didn't even know I did that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what you that's what you did. You, see, because you, I've you, read the lost fundamental. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, you know, I'm sorry not to and there's a lot, there's a lot of great teachers out there, but I know that this concept is is based in science, and I know that when the body's in the right position, uh, you you can get your best. Everybody has a best. As, as some of us are limited because we're not athletic. Some of us are weak, whatever. But everybody can play this game, and everybody can enjoy it, and everybody can get the ball up in the air. That that has never been. That has never been. I've never had a lesson in the thousands and thousands of lessons that I've given. I've never had anyone not be able to get it in the air once they understand what they're supposed to be. Right, right. And what about um, is the hip rotation? You know, as we get older, we get into our late fifties, our sixties, and God bless you, in your seventies. Um, the hip rotation, some people just don't have that kind of flexibility. I don't know what kind of workout regimen that you have or if you I doing have no yoga. flexibility. Uh, no, I, I don't, I don't do any of that. I don't have any flexibility, but when my weight is on my left axis and I turn my chest left, my hips turn left, everything works. When my, when the center of my uh, chest is to the right of my legs, like I was taught, take it back, put the sternum on top of the right leg, okay? So there's a leaning of the upper body back behind the lower body. Then the legs have to go forward because the legs, the left hip has to align itself to the outside of the left foot at impact. So there's that little sliding move that you had to make. But with this concept, what you're doing as you're coiling, as you're turning in your back, when you're actually putting, you're actually getting to that position where you, you align that hip leg thing okay so now now you have a forward axis now all you do is turn the top around the axis the lower body works right with it when you throw a ball did you ever think about shifting your legs or moving anything i mean it, it you, your body your top part's connected to the lower part but if you if you tilt your top part over to the right of course the lower part has to go forward to bring the, the, the top part back but when you're more centered to the ball, you're, I hate to use this word stacked, but you're stacked on top of each other. So if you turn the top, the lower part turns too, as long as there isn't weight on the right foot. And again, for the, for the listeners, uh, just stand up, put primarily most of your weight on your right foot, and just take your left shoulder and turn it as left as you can. You'll see that your hips and, and belly turn with it. So you don't have to worry about hip rotation. See, and that's that's one of the beautiful things about this is that you can control. And in my video, I show you that. I show you that when you're at the top of that position, all you have to do is just clear your chest. Everything else will turn with it. So you don't have to get your legs out ahead of the, you know, like I said, legs first, then top. No, you don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. So we're eliminating all these little timing things that we had to do. Hmm. Uh, I have so many more questions, but we don't have time today because well, well, okay. I want to talk sure to you. I want to talk to you about golf pros out. No, I was going to say I'm sure there's some golf pros out there that are saying that guy's nuts. But I, I, all I ask you to do is try it. Okay. Well, uh, you're I'm not done, nuts. I, 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 you know, not, I came out there last year with a, with a friend of mine, and you spent an hour with him. And, and the video is up on YouTube. It's on the Golf Smarter TV channel of of your you know the highlights of the lesson that you gave my friend Neil. And I'm telling you, ever since that lesson, he has been a maniac on the golf course. He says that he continues to do what you taught him in less than an hour, and his game has just gotten so much better. He's so much more confident. 
So, yeah, you may be out of your mind, but it works. <laughs> well, yeah, everyone says that anyway. But uh, I, I think that uh, I think that this is just an easier way to play. It's not the only way to play. You can be a hand player. You can fan that club open and close it on the downswing if you choose. You can swing. You can sway all your way to the right and try to get it all going back to the left. You can do that too. It's it's been done. I only say that I say this confidently. This is an easier way to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, next time we get together, I want to talk about the your tempo the, and the swing rhythm, and I want to talk about ball flight. We've never really talked about ball flight. I'd I'd like to get your theories and ideas on that. Um, Mm -hmm. But also, uh, my my friends and I, you know, we travel every year, and you and I talked about this before, but I'm going to throw this out here right now. So we're talking about coming down to the Palm Springs area next April 2013, Mm -hmm. and I want you to put on your calendar right now, the morning of April 6th, Saturday morning, I'm hoping mm-hmm. that you're available, that you can meet with me and my three buddies, and I'm going to throw this out here to the Golf Smarter audience. If you want to be – Tony, do you do clinics? Yeah, sure. Okay. So Monday, uh, Saturday morning, April 6, 2013, if you have any interest in joining Tony Manzoni and myself on a one, maybe two-hour clinic, a Golf Smarter clinic – one-on-one with Tony, you start sending me emails, you let me know if your calendar, I'm giving you a year to think about this, right? I'm not going to keep mentioning it. I'm just going to throw it out here this one time, and maybe Tony will will get something together and bring a group of people instead of just my foursome. That would be great fun. It really would be. It would be great fun. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Because I know yeah. that some people, some Golf Smarter listeners, have traveled across the United States to come and, and have one-on-one sessions with you. Yes, they have. You know, I've had I've had a, a ton of them, uh, and, and you know, as far away as New York, uh, and there's a, one fellow in France that said he's coming down. I'm, I'm waiting. And he's a golf uh, smarter listener. He's a golf smarter listener. Wow! In France, how cool is in that? France. <laughs> That's, I yeah, love so these I mean, podcasts. Well, you know, when, when I first did the, the first interview with you, I thought this was a Southern Cal kind of a deal, and I had no idea that you were worldwide and i started getting emails from people from switzerland and i heard of the golf smarter blah 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 and i thought what in the heck well so, yeah you, uh, you know you were thinking radio when the first time we talked and i think it was about the yeah. shot watch right it was shot watch yeah it was about shot watch that's exactly right so i had no idea you know how important um your your what you're doing is, I mean, it's, no, it's, it's I, fantastic, really. I, I don't know really about is. important. I'm just saying that no, we have... No, it is important. No, we have, a, we have a far reach because we're on the internet. You know, it's, it's a global idea. I don't know if it's important, but <laughs> what you're saying is important. I'm just giving you the soapbox. Well, I mean, you, you give <laughs> fellows like me that, that have something to say about the golf swing, uh, you know, whether you, whether you agree or not, at least it's an opinion that's out there and it gets people thinking. And we're... we're well, how would I do that if it wasn't for uh, your company? You know, uh, it's, oh, I'm certainly not a household name in golf. I mean, I am. You should be. I am a family, but <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want to hear what they dog. say about you at home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let everybody know now. Um, please come to GolfSmarter.com and pick up if you haven't already picked up Tony's book, The Lost Fundamental: One Simple Move, Better Golf Forever. Uh, you're one of the few who have not uh, in the Golf Smarter audience. The book is only uh, twenty dollars. And plus shipping. Now we have to mention there there are shipping different shipping fees uh, for overseas uh, for Canada and for the United States. I think the United States it's it's like five bucks or something. But right. um, so the book is twenty dollars. Now the DVD is available. Again, it's only available at golfsmarter.com or at thelostfundamental.com. dot com. Um, but you know it's it's also lets Tony know where they're hearing about it when you buy it from us. And the DVD is, well, you say twenty nine ninety five, thirty dollars plus the shipping, and uh, the shipping comes from Tony, not from me. But uh, I just help him handle all the orders, and it's an easier way to come. So please come to golfsmarter dot com and go into the Golfers Mart there, and pick up one or both of Tony's latest contributions to the your game improvement, the lost fundamental. 
Um, Tony Manzoni, you are a hero, my friend. I really enjoy talking to you, and you are coming back soon, right? We're not I sure. You, sure am. you may be back next episode or two weeks, but we can't record anything today, um, but because our schedules won't allow. But we will get you back on very soon because I still have more questions. Sounds great to me, Tony. And thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, tell you what my theories are about the Gulf Stream.